All right, so this week what I wanted to do is to take the time to talk a bit about the um, the extension release for 3ds Max 2014. It's a bit in advance because the, um, the extension will be uh, shipped or made available on September 30th, but because there's something of interest to me in the extension release, I wanted to show you uh, what's coming to in a bit more details, and then after that, when it's going to be published, you can refer back to this blog post to uh, to see what's uh, what's happening with this series. So basically, we're, we've just announced uh, it's on the area as well. So this is a page on the area that we're uh, coming with an extension release. It's for subscription customers, and uh, there's a few things in there. So we will support Point Cloud, and we're we'll, we're going to be able to talk about that a bit later as well. We also will fully support Python scripting. That's a been uh, that's a big request from customers. Uh, uh, so so we, we got Python scripting, and we're going to be able to show that as well. But what's of my of interest to me uh, today is the new stereo camera. For those of you who have uh, seen some of my blog posts in the past about stereoscopy, uh, there was a, the, uh, I did a modifier, I did a few things. So what we did is uh, we did a collaboration between uh, AMD and Autodesk, and we developed this new stereo camera. It's an assembly right inside of Max. But what's unique about it and what's different from what I've done in the past is that this new stereo camera allows you to visually see it in the viewport. So instead of calculating a lot of mathematics to, uh, in order to create the correct pixel separation or angle of separation and all of that, now you can just put on your glasses and see it right in the 3ds max viewport which is kind of you know it's much more productive and it's pretty cool so again it's a collaboration between amd and autodesk and it will be part of the extension on september 30th so for those of you who uh, haven't seen my stereoscopy uh blog post before so this is my uh, old post it was done in 2009 but in there um, a few things that I want to point out is that I talk about the rules of stereoscopy so all of these rules still apply and I show how to calculate the basics of stereoscopy the different t projection technologies uh, how to calculate comfortable comfortable stereoscopy to make sure that the viewers are not uh, uncomfortable as they watch the movie for a long time so basically all of these examples are still valid and the values that you get for for uh, interactual separations and things like that and and the um, the zero plane uh, the zero parallel parallax plane all of these uh, concepts still apply with the with this new tool, which is great because it's a great uh, continuation of our stereo efforts uh, inside of 3ds Max. So if you want to learn more about stereoscopy and the principles of comfortable stereoscopy, please visit this blog post there, uh, and it's uh, it's on my blog. So if you just go into the blogs there and Louis Marcou blog and search for the entries, you'll find it. And it's about an hour to I think it's about an hour to an hour and a half of content on how to explore stereoscopy and make good uh, stereoscopy for your uh, for your viewers. So this is my blog on stereoscopy. Uh, I'm going to come back to my other blog post a bit later. But uh, this is the file that I've prepared in 3ds Max. And because I wanted to show you something stereoscopic, I wanted to create something uh, kind of, uh, you know, going at your face kind of thing, I would probably not um, encourage you to do that kind of stuff too often because it doesn't give you um, always good results. Uh, it's always good or preferable to have things that work behind the screen rather than in front of the screen. But anyway, we'll just do something here for the cool effect of doing stereoscopic work. So we have a camera in the scene and what I've done is um, it's just a basic animation of um, something like this where we've got the, uh, the, the cylinders here, so the tubes just rotating like so and we've got the uh, a bar here. So I'd like to use those as particle emitters inside of uh, 3ds Max to um, to do some some cool effects. So what I've done, um, I've just I'm just going to hide the Joe here, the Joe, and we're going to bring in particles. And I've done a few uh, particle emitters there. So event number one just emits a particle from the box object. So it, it the, the box that we had there, and it just throws them in the camera. There's some spin in there, and they're just made of, out of it of a cube and you see that we've I've instanced the shape in other uh, operators there so what I've got there I'm just gonna press play or just press play here and you see that we got the cubes and they're just thrown on the camera or something like that so that you kind of get the idea for why I would want to do this in a stereoscopic uh, project the second thing I did here is I, I'm just gonna close this one down I've attached these particles and there's a birth event here and the birth is happening between frame 0 and 120 and I've created exactly the amount of particles uh, that corresponds to the objects the the torus in the background and all the vertices will receive a uh, one of these objects so now it's a cube it's the instance of this one here but it's pretty much the same thing so what you're gonna get as an effect is on on, on those tubes here you'll see that it's gonna start to uh, and I've made them so that they're attached to the emitter so we get this kind of nice motion graphics kind of feel to it and those some of those um, 
tubes are going forward the camera so we get some nice depth into that so that's kind of what I wanted to, to do here the other thing that I did uh, at the end here is uh, since we're doing all of these shapes uh, I wanted to do an, a last one and the last one uses a new operator and it's a stop gradually operator basically what I do is I take one I just emit one particle and I throw it at the screen and because it's the same shape instance and I scale it up or scale it down during the uh, the animation and then I stop it gradually what it does it just throws this cube here from the back to the front and it just stops there so it's kind of a it could be used for a logo or things like that anyway so when you combine all of these things together you get an effect like this and I created it like pretty quickly just to get some uh, some stereo effects but I wanted to share how I did it because it's kind of interesting so you get the uh, this thing that comes in the front and the beauty of this is I wanted to show you another operator that I kinda really like is let's say that you do a lot of particles like this well that's not that that much but you 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 have a lot of particles and this camera here kinda sees this uh, the uh, all of this and you see that as they go uh, outside of the camera frustrum they kind of they're, they're useless and they take uh, calculation time so what you can do in the uh, one of the new operator here is the camera calling if I just drag this in, I'll put it just above the display operator and I'll grab the camera calling and I'll say, not use the active camera, but I'll pick that specific camera that we have in our scene. So now this camera is used as the uh, as the calling camera and it's kind of a delete operator, so anything that's outside of the camera frustrum will be deleted. So if I grab this, ca this, uh, this operator and I just uh, instance it and I just say paste instance here, we have exactly the same one. And we know for this one, this is only one particle, it never gets uh, outside of the frustrum, so I'm not going to put one there. But what's going to happen now is that you'll see that as we play this back is that as soon the camera if I just select the camera here oops grab the camera itself you see that the camera frustrum is there and as you drag as you as you play the animation here you said all of the particles that are outside of the camera frustrum they're all uh, just deleted automatically so it's a good way to keep only what's visible in terms of particles inside of the calculation um, of, of particle flow which is kind of nice anyway so what's good about that is as well is that now we have a um, we have a shape, it's a cube, so I go back here, I say, well, I don't want to do this with a cube, I just want to try with uh, letters. So I'm just going to go back here and say, uh, whatever, letters. And if we play this animation now, you said all of these, uh, the same effect is now applied with letters, and probably this one needed to be rotated, but the same effect is kind of uh, achievable this way. I can switch that to something like, I don't know, pyramids or special, whatever, you know, you can pretty much experiment and do your own thing. But what I did here is I, um, I created the... Um, I kind of did my own interpretation of the 3ds Max logo here, and I uh, just used it as a um, as a shape instance for my particle system. So if I turn off the uh, the shape here, and I turn on the oops the shape, and I turn on the sh the uh, the uh, the uh, sorry the shape instance, what you get is the 3ds Max logo being replaced. So it's easy to replace uh, with your own logo and or, or do things like that. Anyway, so you get kind of the idea. If you look at it from the side here, we have our camera and we have this in the background. We would like to create a stereoscopic effect where our middle plane here uh, or the uh, the origin will be where we want to have the zero parallax uh, effect. So this here will be behind the screen and this here will be in the front and is going to just be thrown towards the uh, towards the audience. I'll turn off my layers here. I don't. I don't need them. So the new camera, the stereo, the new stereo camera will be inside of the create panel, and it's a system. It's an assembly. So it's going to be beside biped and sunlight and all of that. And you see that there's a, there's an assembly here called stereo. So if I turn this on, you can create a camera. You decide which type of camera you want to create. Do you want to create a target camera or a free camera? And uh, in my case here, I want to create a free camera. And if, do you want to create a center camera? Yes or no? I usually say yes because it's a good reference because it's going to create three cameras in your rig so left right and also a center camera just as a good reference if you don't want it if you want if you don't want to have the center camera you can turn it off but I I leave it on because it's a good reference to have you can create a stereo rig right away I can go here and say create my stereo rig and you'll see I'm just gonna undo this because I'm probably in a layer here that is hidden so let's go back into a layer that is not hidden and if I go back to my camera and I say uh, create you'll see that it's gonna create the rig immediately if I want to create the uh, the system exactly where a camera is is already like let's say that we've done this uh, this setup and we already like the camera we like the point of view and we've set it up for rendering and it it, it fits exactly with what what uh, with what we want I can go back here in stereo and say pick camera and grab this camera and now we have a stereo rig that fits exactly that camera space the thing is is if I grab my original camera camera zero one 
you see that if I move this, it's not. Uh, if I move this, it's the 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 three cameras are not attached to this, but it's just a linking thing. You just grab the camera and you can, or the assembly, and you can link it to the or to your original camera. And if it's animated, you're going to get exactly the same uh, <clears throat> the same animation if you want to. The other thing that I really like about this uh, this is that this is a single object. So when you click it, it's an assembly. But if you go to the modifier stack, you can change the FOV, the lens. All of this is feasible right there from the. It's the same interface face as a regular camera all of the effects are here and you can change the FOV the lens and, and all of that make all of these decisions right there where it's going to become very interesting as well is where the stereo controls are so see we, we have the uh, interaxial separation the zero parallax the stereo mode we offer the converge mode the parallel mode but the off axis is always your, your best choice it gives you accurate stereoscopy and there's no con compensation or anything like that with like the converge you just project it on a flat screen and you're going to get re really good results out of that so I prefer off axis it's always good but if you want to do some toe in adjustment you can do that as well so you can make some some small adjustment there those concepts were in my stereoscope uh, my stereo cam plugin as well but what's different now is that all of this is fully rigged fully controlled and it's um, it, it, you can also see it in the viewport which is the big advantage of this uh, of this new tool and it's uh, something that I wanted to have for a while instead of 3ds max so now it's there it's kind of cool Anyway, so stereo mode uh, you can do also, and that, that was not possible in my uh, in my camera uh, my cam my stereo cam modifier is the the right cam offset by itself or the left cam offset by itself. So if you, you need to match, um, just to adjust left eye or right eye because to to match something uh, that you you know that has been shot or something like that uh, with uh, real footage, you can make those stereo adjustment here. You can also display the zero parallax, so you can see that now it's at zero zero zero. So if I want to change that, I can go back here and say my zero parallax I want that to be further or closer to the camera I want that to be at zero 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 at the origin so it's about that distance from the camera I visually as you can see uh, I can just place it like that and it's already done the other thing is I want to define the save volume so the save volume is the what we refer to as the comfortable um, comfortable stereoscopy but in this case here it's just uh, to see the camera frustrum so if you can you can turn it off and I can turn this this one off I know that we have a good uh, a good setup now but if you want to find out what's the comfortable stereoscopy rather than doing all these calculations now you can see it directly in the viewport which is going to give you extremely efficient um, visual way to decide if it's co okay or not. You just put on the glasses, try it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, you just reduce the interaction separation. Very interactive and pretty cool. So anyway, so what we have now is we're looking at our scene through the camera, but we've created a stereoscopic camera, so we would like to see this through the stereoscopic camera. So instead of choosing a regular camera, you see that now we have a new menu called Stereo Camera, and we have one in our scene, so I'll say select that stereo rig and now as soon as you've got a stereo rig you have different viewing modes so now we're looking at central eye you can go left eye or you can go right eye you can go and then you have different viewing mode in my case here I don't have a uh, HD monitor so I'm not uh, sorry an HD 3d monitor so a stereoscopic monitor so I'm not able to see active but if you have a full um, you know fully AMD uh, fire pro graphics card that but that, and that's very important for active stereo you need to have an AMD fire Pro graphics card that supports DX11 and also supports quad buffers. And if you have that plus an active uh, HD 3D stereo monitor or something equivalent, you're going to be able to see it in um, see it in full active 3D. But if you don't have that, you have all of these other options like horizontal interlace. You have checkerboard. Uh, you have luminous anaglyph, uh, free view to parallel, so this is uh, crossed, and I'm going back to here anaglyph, which is the format that uh, I can use on this machine. But you see that it's fully visible interactively. If I just scrub here, you see that uh, I see the anaglyph format. But just to come back to uh, to um, AMD here, if you go on their website and you go to Fire Pro, there's a and you look for the their professional graphics card and you filter here. I've filtered with 3D stereo output. I set it to yes, and it lists all of the fire uh, fire Pro, sorry, for a Fire Pro uh, cards that do support the uh, the uh, the 3D, so they need to, to be DirectX 11 compatible and support quad buffers. So once you've got that, you're all set and you're ready to have active stereoscopy in the uh, in the 3ds Max viewport. But in this case here, I'm using Anaglyph. But you can see that if I grab the actual camera, uh, once it's a, it's a, it's selected, let's say that I you know when I move a bit further in the animation here, I can see the um, the effect of the um, of the Anaglyph separation. 
or the pixel separation and then by playing with the interactional here I can say well set it back to zero and then we're going to interactively define how strong this effect will be so if I want to have something decent you know visually I know that something like that will work but if I go way too much it's going to start to ghost and it's not going to work very well so something like this here visually kind of works so I know it works and we're ready to go and we have our stereoscopic effect right there in the viewport so if I maximize this viewport maximize it and press play we have our effect our full effect in 3d like so so I'm just gonna pl let it play a few times so if you've got uh, anaglyph glasses at home you can watch this in uh, in anaglyph and have the all of these particles thrown at you uh, and going forward on the screen and uh, going going towards the uh, towards towards you towards the audience so that's kind of the idea for the um, for the anaglyph uh, stereoscopic uh, sorry the uh, so the anaglyph view inside of the viewport. Now, if you want to render this, you need to use batch render. So if I go here and say render and bring up the batch render, you'll be able to add a batch node here or a batch uh, sorry not a batch node but a batch uh, a batch entry, and you can go here and say camera and you can pick left camera, right camera, and even the center camera if you want to, but I can say here, create a view for the left, left camera, add another one here, and that view number two will be for camera right, and now you've got your setup for rendering for this, uh, for this specific animation. And um, if you want to learn more about how to do batch rendering, I did another stereoscopy um, a blog post called 3ds Max and Composite Workflow. It's how to render um, what you do with your when you have your left eye and your right eye. If you want to use Composite, which is also included with 3ds Max, how to use Composite to produce a um, a sequence of images, rendered sequence images, to uh, uh, so sorry, so, so rendered sequence images and combine them together using uh, anaglyph format. So that's kind of the idea. So that's uh, coming in, on September 30th, um, and if you are watching this video after September 30th, you'll be able to get the plugin uh, or the um, the tool right away. In, if you want to know how to find this tool, you just go here and help Autodesk product information, and there's a uh, an entry here called Exchange App. So if you click on that, it's going to go to the uh, 3ds Max Exchange, and you'll see that we already have a few um, a few tools that are a few apps that are available uh, yet uh, so far. But if you when if you log in after September 30th, you'll be able to see the uh, stereoscopy uh, extension here. So I hope you like it. Uh, it's it's definitely pretty cool and it's fun to have that inside of 3ds max and uh, i hope you enjoy it